I don't know if you do remember the all the lines, a few of the lines of your character, but if you do, uh, mm. uh, which one is your favorite? I don't want to spoil the ones you haven't heard yet, <clears throat> but um, I think the one that stuck out to me the most was probably the one that I announced with. Um, oh. Fun fact, here's a little teaser. It's actually one of the champion lines from the game. Uh, sub out the word legend for which uh, you can equip a champion line where it says, where I say, um, I am the grim trans witch your parents warned you about. <laughs> Hear that bell? It's the witching hour. When I first got into the session, um, I, like I have any input, but I, you know, throwing out all my bad ideas. I, I said, there are a couple things that are important to me. And, you know, obviously I'm not the writer, I'm not the director. So feel free to take these and like toss them in the garbage. Um, but to me, it's very important that this character is very upfront about the fact that they're trans. It needs to be said. Mm. Um, that That's going to be hit or miss with people. And I don't necessarily mean in a controversial way, but in, in a way that not everyone needs that up front and center. They're going to be bad faith people who say like, ah, you know, I can't believe this character's entire personality is trans, which is so far from the truth. Mm. Um, and then there are going to be people within the queer umbrella who who say, you know, I don't necessarily need it to be spoon fed to me like that, but we're always walking this tightrope where we get so little representation for the trans community. And that's only one of many marginalized communities that get like three seconds in the spotlight. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and we have these singular tiny little basket of characters we hold up and, and we really wish we could be seeing characters that look and sound like us all over the place because... I think it's kind of cool when the, the media we watch and consume and the games we play kind of look and sound like the actual world we live in. Um, and so we have so few examples of good, positive trans representation that we're walking this tightrope between wanting to normalize it so that it's not a big deal. You know, people can stop thinking about, you know, people who don't know anything about the trans community, for instance, can mm. stop thinking about trans people through the lens of, oh, I think I heard them say something about sports on Fox last week and start thinking of us as like regular ass people who are just trying to make rent and like get to work on time and like play video games on the weekend to decompress. We want to get to a point where people realize that we're just people too. Yeah. <laughs> Revolutionary. <laughs> um, and and so, you know, those are the moments where you want to have a story that doesn't lean so hard on that spotlight. And I think the balance we struck is we didn't want to tell, she says as not the writer, but we didn't want to tell uh, another transitioning story. Like it's very, it's very, it's so common that, you know, you have a, a the tropes are like, you have a POC character. It's got to be a story about people being racist to them. Or, you know, if you, if you have a queer story, it has to be a coming out story and about how they negotiate their family relationship. Mm. And it's like the only story we ever know. Yeah. So we wanted to not tell that story. So we started Catalyst in a place where she had already transitioned. And then the second thing that I said I wanted, and it's totally shallow of me, <laughs> is I said, I really want her to be super hot, you guys. <laughs> Oh, and here's why, because you, when you characters like this come and go and no, you know, no, no disrespect with peace and love to Nicole Maines and to Rainbow Six Siege, you know, where they introduced another trans character and very promptly, like everyone moves on in life and forgets mm -hmm. because it doesn't really get much more than that singular announcement moment. And so I'm thinking, you know, how can we keep this positive representation of a playable first person trans character in a triple A video game, holy shit, in the spotlight as long as possible. And I think the way that we do that is make them a visually compelling character, make their story compelling yeah. so that you get people creating art left and right of the character. And there's been so much fan art so quickly. It's been incredible. <laughs> and, you know, uh, uh, throwing her into little like machinima videos and like, you know, like your Gary's mod kind of silliness and <laughs> hopefully not too much porn. <laughs> um, but, but also visually, like just look at, at the way the community plays with characters like Loba. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those like necessary evils where it's like, 
we want to walk that line. So if she's visually compelling, people will keep playing the character even after like the kit isn't meta. <laughs> You'll still have people that are like, I think she's a badass looking character who has awesome skins, or I think she's super hot and that's all I need out of my video games. And so I'm <laughs> going to keep playing this character regardless of whether it's in like the top three picks or whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you can, you see my master plan. I, there's a lot of strategy that went into this. Perfect game. plan. This is the best plan I've ever heard. <laughs> I try to be upfront. I realize there's a very shallow approach to 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 taking the character design um because at the end of the day it shouldn't need to be that but like i mean i like hot characters too 